Hey everyone, Tony Maritato here. So Brenda recently asked about osteochondritis, which is a condition you don't hear about too often. We always hear about uh, osteoarthritis, but osteochondritis. Osteo referring to bone, chondritis referring to an active inflammation of the cartilage. Um, there's osteochondritis desiccans. There's, there's a variety of... Um, types of inflammation, but the, the big picture is we really don't know a lot about it. It's kind of a generic term. You're basically saying the cartilage is inflamed. There's lots of reasons for it. Certainly there's probably genetic components when you look at autoimmune conditions. Um, there's damage, mechanical damage, you know, from injury. Uh, and then I believe there's a component that's probably associated with lifestyle uh, <clears throat> factors like smoking, drinking, consuming uh, foods that you may be more sensitive to. You know, certainly we understand there's, there's junk food, there's high sugar, high processed food, but there's also other foods that individuals are just more sensitive to. Some people can certainly tolerate wheat-based foods more easily than others. Certain people can tolerate dairy more easily than others. So when we're looking at a condition known as osteochondritis or any kind of active pro-inflammatory condition, uh, there really is no simple answer. Certainly you have the pharmacological approach where they try to either manage your immune response to reduce inflammation. There's anti-inflammatories, there's steroids. Your body will produce its own version of steroids, corticosteroids, uh, um, glucocorticosteroids. I'm not the chemist, you know, this is, this is going way outside my comfort zone, but I'm just trying to expose you to some terms and you can look them up online and talk to professionals who, you know, maybe an endocrinologist or somebody who really understands that level uh, much deeper than me. But what I tend to do, I tend to approach it from a lifestyle intervention. Now, one of Brenda's primary questions was, if she has it in one knee, does it typically affect both knees? I think it depends on the cause, right? So if there was trauma to the cartilage resulting in active inflammation in the cartilage, it's reasonable that the trauma affected one knee and not both knees. If it's more of a systemic inflammatory response, an autoimmune response, it's more most likely going to be seen in both knees, both extremities. Uh, I think these are questions that are great, great questions for you to follow up with your physician or, you know, a, a rheumatologist, an endocrinologist, somebody that you trust, somebody who understands and is willing to look deeper into your case history, your background, ask questions, um, you know, just, you can't just kind of look at one thing. I believe Brenda was asking about imaging, you know, and, and, Imaging might look amazing, but the individual might be experiencing severe pain. You can't just look at the image, the x-ray, the MRI, the CT scan, and make clinical decisions based on that single factor. We've seen multiple studies, fairly large-scale studies, that have concluded you'll, you'll see images of what look like severe degenerative changes in a joint and the individual will be experiencing no pain. You'll see a joint that looks perfect on an image, and the individual will have significant pain, and then you'll see everything in between. So imaging alone certainly can't be used as the only diagnostic criteria, and no physician would ever do that. They would look into case history, lifestyle, they'd look at so many other factors. Um, but specifically, so if we're looking at an active inflammatory condition, uh, I usually look for really simple diagnostics. You know, like one of the things that I'll ask my patients now, I never recommend or advise they take any kind of medication over the counter or prescription, but I'll usually ask if you took an Advil, a Motrin, and a Leave, do you feel a change in your symptoms? If you feel 
the expected change as in reduced pain, improved function, reduced swelling. And then once the medication wears off, so let's say, you know, you take an over the counter anti-inflammatory, um, within an hour or so you feel great within four to six hours, you're back to where you started. Okay. So we have some confirmation to suggest that there's active inflammation that's going on uh, and this condition is related to that active inflammation. We knock out the inflammation, we improve the symptoms. Okay, now let's find a way to treat the root cause of that inflammation. I, I always go back to inflammation is not the problem. Inflammation is a symptom. It, it's, it's a response. Just like if I have a, a bacterial or a viral infection, I, my body temperature goes up, I've got a fever. The fever isn't the problem when it's you know 101, 102, even 103. The fever is a sign of my body doing something to try and combat the problem. It raises body temperature to kill the bacteria, the virus. Uh, certainly if the fever gets extreme, I have to take some sort of medication to bring the fever back down and deal with the invader a different way. But similar here is that, so if, if there is a response, we know that there is active inflammation. Now we need to figure out how to, you know, facilitate a response to the inflammation, to the healing process to try and boost the immune system uh, in a way to deal with the issue. I'm not sure, Brenda, <laughs> Brenda, Brenda, if that answers your question, um, but hopefully I can just give you a different perspective and some other things to look at in terms of chondro, osteochondritis. Um, it, it doesn't guarantee a knee replacement and it doesn't necessarily have to be bilateral, especially if it's associated with some sort of trauma, either current or previous. Um, it could also be a situation where, you know, as a child, you fell on that knee, you had some damage, there's, there's a weak link in the chain there. And now because of lifestyle factors, um, you have an active inflammatory response that's coming up in that knee first. You know, I, I know for myself within my own body, um, my left thumb is kind of my barometer for how well my body is doing. If I go out and eat a bunch of junk food, if we go to a birthday party and I have some cake and uh, a couple other things that I, you know, aren't necessarily at the top of an anti-inflammatory diet, the first thing that's going to happen within the next hour or two is the base of this thumb is going to have severe, severe pain. And if I continue that, you know, consuming that kind of junk, then it's my left toe and my left knee. That, that's just me. 24, 48 hours later, if I get back to a normal, you know, healthy diet, I feel great. Those symptoms are gone. I can do what I need to do uh, pain free. So I've found the certain kind of triggers for me. I think you may potentially do the same for yourself. And I think probably more frequently than we'd like to admit, admit. Um, clients are getting joint replacements and other kind of surgical interventions because they're not finding what's triggering that inflammatory response, that pain response in the body. Um, and we're doing the best we can do. You know, we, we can't function if my shoulder is hurting and, and limiting my ability to lift things can't function if my knee is hurting, limiting my ability to get up and move around. Uh, and if we can't find those triggers, we, we go to the next solution, which typically is surgery. So Brenda, let me know if this helped. Uh, I hate to step outside of my you know, comfort zone and, and what I can talk about. So I've talked about as much as I can right now. I'll catch you guys in the next video. Keep the questions coming. You guys are doing amazing. Check out the YouTube channel, support it. Um, I really appreciate everybody in this group. I'll catch you later.